Imagine that you've just prepared Thanksgiving dinner for 10 people and suddenly 20 show up. Well, actually, that might not be a big problem considering the amount of food that's left over after a typical Thanksgiving meal. But what would you do if 100 people showed up or 1,000? And what if they all had big appetites? Well, here's one solution. The Gospel Lighthouse Church of Blytheville, Arkansas is a place where the holiday of Thanksgiving has a very special meaning. For it was here in November of 1986 that a series of extraordinary events unfolded that continue to astonish the people involved, even today. It all began when 20 church families decided to share their Thanksgiving dinner with needy individuals in the community who could not afford their own. The plan was simple. Each family would prepare a home-cooked turkey dinner with all the trimmings, enough to feed several extra people. Church secretary Carolyn O'Melian participated that day. All of it was home cooked, and it was just like you would prepare for your own family. It was wonderful. They hoped to prepare enough food to feed as many as 400 people. The feast included 20 stuffed turkeys with all the trimmings, trays of mashed potatoes and candied yams, a variety of salads, a table full of pies. Church member Terry Brassfield ran the kitchen that day. I can't explain to you how excited we were because we just knew this day was going to be special. It was going to be special because, for one thing, it had never been done before. This church congregation had never done anything like this before. The feast was laid out in the church's brand new fellowship hall. When we opened the door, there were probably about 150 people ready to come in. And then as we began to put them through the line, I don't ever remember seeing the line small again. Hundreds of people came through the hall that afternoon, followed by hundreds more. Everyone had hearty appetites from the youngest child to the oldest adult, and uh, we did not limit them to food. They could come through the line as many times as necessary. Many times the volunteers were on the verge of running out of food. We thought they would never quit coming, but the food just kept lasting and lasting, and uh, seemed to not go away. It just kept increasing rather than decreasing. Church member Jeannie Templeton worked in the kitchen that day. When we would run out of something, we'd turn around, hand somebody the empty one, and they would hand us another full one. And we fed people nonstop from the time they came in at 11 or 11.30 until the last one was served at 2. Later that afternoon, as the last guests were served, church members calculated that the food they'd prepared for 400 had actually fed more than 2,000 people. I work in accounting, and so I'm thinking, okay, if you have 20 people bringing turkeys, and each turkey feeds, you know, eight to 10 people or whatever, there's no way we could have fed 2,000 people with that food. There's no way. And amazingly, they still had food left over, which they packed up to distribute to needy neighbors and shut-ins. So they climbed on the church bus with containers of food and plates and decided that they were going to go door to door and give everybody a turkey dinner who hadn't already had one. Every surface of the hall was scrubbed until there wasn't a trace left of the great feast. It was thorough. They had it spotless. When they got through cleaning, and it looked like it had when we had begun. It was good and clean. Just as they were about to leave, there was a knock at the door. It was a family of six, a single mother and her five children. Uh, we ran into some people that told us that we could get something to eat here. I directed her over to the other side of the hall where the senior citizens had set up a place to give out gloves and caps and things for the winter. The volunteers didn't know how they were going to feed the family, but didn't have the heart to turn them away. And we were in dismay because there wasn't any food left. We didn't know what we were going to do. We thought maybe we could go to the store and buy her, buy her some groceries or something. And then one church member noticed a loaf of bread on a sideboard that just moments before had been wiped clean. Oh it was a fresh, Ooh. baked, bread and it was still warm. Nobody could have put it there. There was not a um, stove on, there was not an oven on. Nobody had baked that bread there that day, but there it was. 
As another volunteer stepped away to get a knife to cut the bread, she noticed a cabinet door ajar. I think I just found more food. What? Oh my gosh. They began searching the rest of the empty kitchen and soon discovered a tray filled with stuffing and carved pieces of turkey. And when they brought it up, it was still warm. It was like somebody had just baked it. Where had this food come from? And why hadn't church members seen it when they scoured the hall from top to bottom? The food just appeared. It was not there before, and it suddenly appeared. God had to put it there. And how was it that throughout the day, whenever food seemed to be running low, more of it appeared? They had prepared food for 400, but more than 2,000 had shared Thanksgiving. There's no way that we could have fed the number of people that we fed with the food that we had on hand. It, it was stretched to the very limit, and God had to stretch it. Definition of a miracle is something that cannot be done by human hands. We could not take the food that was there in the proportion that it came and feed the number of people that we did unless there was a divine intervention. So I know in my heart it was a miracle. Thanksgiving dinner that day to me was proof that God still does miracles. He always has and he always will.